Psalm 121 is a psalm of a pilgrimage, a traveler, a traveler that is traveling through a dangerous territory with thieves and robbers and, and going to a place to worship, going to Jerusalem. And this also can relate to us, a traveler through life. And certainly this life has trials and tribulations, troubles. And this psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help, or from where comes my help. And... Certainly the hills surrounding Jerusalem was a dangerous place for wild animals, thieves, and, and even those hills, uh, they were called high places to, in pagan worship. So he's traveling and, and, and with danger and, and pagan, uh, pagan idols around, and he is not looking to those for help uh, he 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 says in verse 2 my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth my help my deliverer my redeemer my savior my my keeper is the Lord again Lord capitalized in our English versions means Yahweh, the covenant God, the personal God, the living God who made heaven and earth. He is not like an idol with eyes that cannot see and hands that cannot feel and feet that cannot walk. He is certainly alive and certainly alive today as we celebrate this coming Sunday. God in the flesh defeating death, defeating the grave. And Jesus is our living Lord. The New Testament writers in the early church ascribed Lord to Jesus, the Savior, the Lord, our Master. And he made heaven and earth. He is our Creator, the very one who made the hills, is the one that this traveler is looking to for help. And he says in verse 3, He will not allow your foot to be moved. This is a time of reminding ourselves that He is our sustainer. He is the solid rock. He is the firm foundation. The Apostle Paul said, He is the only foundation that someone can build a life, build anything spiritual. It must begin with Jesus, the beginner of our faith and the completer of our faith. He is the solid rock. And upon His Word, we can build a life. Upon Jesus and his word, life can be built. And when storms come and the winds blow, the lives who are built on other things is like sinking sand. But the life built on the word of God and upon Jesus stands firm because it is on the rock. And he says, He who keeps you will not slumber. You know, Elijah, talking to the false prophets of Baal, as they were trying to call fire down to consume the sacrifice, Elijah poked fun at them and said, Where is Baal? Is he asleep? Is he on a long journey? But I assure you, Yahweh, the Lord, our God, he never sleeps. He is not like a dumb idol. He is our creator and sustainer, our keeper, and he does not sleep. He says in verse 4, 
Behold, he who keeps Israel, or he who keeps God's people, shall neither slumber nor sleep. Our God doesn't mute his phone at any time. Our God keeps all of his appointments when his children come to him in prayer and in need. He hears and he cares and he's ever present. He ne neither slumbers nor sleeps. You don't have to wait in line to talk to him. You have direct access to the throne room of God through Jesus Christ, our great high priest. He says in verse 5, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your protector. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. You know, someone that is going into battle during biblical times had a shield on his left hand or left arm to protect that side of his body and his sword was in his right hand. So, the, the right side was defenseless, but not us in Christ. Not us who trust in the Lord. He is the shade. He is ever-present, just like our shadows are. He is ever-present. And he says in verse 6, The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Certainly, in the Middle East, the sun is very hot. And sunstroke is a, a very dangerous, dangerous thing. And also the moon, uh, we get the word lunatic from the lunar cycles. And so in all areas of life, uh, in the daytime, in the nighttime, and as we travel through life, we have God that protects us physically and emotionally. And when we get to heaven, we're going to just realize just how much our Lord protected us. And also, He has not given us a spirit of fear. Those who are in Christ are sound. Why? Because God's Word is is very sound and he protects us in all areas of life as we travel through the extremes of daytime and nighttime all areas in verse 7 he says the lord shall preserve you or keep you from all evil he shall preserve your soul you know, body, soul, and spirit is how we're made. And, and God, our Savior, the Lord, saves our whole being, the whole person. Yes, we live in this world, and we sometimes, God help us, sometimes we mess up and, and, and fall into sin. But our Lord is a very gracious and merciful God. When we repent and, and get back up and start following Him, you see, some think that, you know, since we're in this world, we can live uh, sinful and do whatever we want to, but not the Christian. He saves our whole being, and we strive with His help to be more like Him every day. Our entire being belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And He keeps us. He keeps us from all evil. Remember the story of Joseph. His life, the trouble that he went through, sold into slavery and then accused of something uh, that he did not do and then thrown in prison. But from, the, from that, through it all, God was with him. And then he became the prime minister of Egypt. And when his brothers who sold him into slavery came before him and asked for his forgiveness because they were in great fear, Joseph said, You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. God worked good 
out of it for Joseph and for an entire people. So sometimes, sometimes we got to step back a little bit. Sometimes we got to wait a little bit to see just what all God has brought us through. And he will bring us through this, church. He will bring us through this. Remember, heads we win, tails we win. We cannot lose when we are in Christ Jesus. He says in verse 8, The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So this traveler is protected uh, in life, through life, and for all eternity. You see, that's the good news that we're celebrating this week. This Friday, we remember how Jesus went to the cross for us to shed his life's blood for us, to make the once for all sacrifice. It says in Hebrews that he died once for all. The Bible assures us that whosoever will may come and drink of the water of life. Whosoever may come and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ unto salvation, to trust him. And we are protected forevermore. The night before Jesus went to the cross, he prayed. And he prayed for his disciples. He prayed for those who will trust in him in the years and centuries to come. He prayed. And he told the Father that the ones that the Father has given to him is kept. Is kept. You see, we are kept by the power of God. I tell you what, when you're kept with the power of God, I tell you what, there's security in that. And it lasts forever, evermore. You see, if our security is in our wealth, let me tell you, it can be gone in a day. If our security is in our health, you know, we think nothing will happen to us. We're healthy. We, we do everything right. I tell you what, your health can fail you in just an hour. If our security is just in human relationships, let me tell you something. Sometimes when you got to count on somebody, they may not even show up. But I tell you what, the Lord, the Lord is the shade on our right hand. He is ever present. He promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And because of the cross of Christ and because of his resurrection, we are sanctified and justified in him. Who can condemn us? No one. No one. Therefore, those who are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. We are kept. We are kept for all eternity, body, soul, and spirit. We are kept. We are to strive to live like him. Uh, he is our Savior and our example, but yet someday, someday we will be delivered even from this old body that we, we got now to a new glorified body, and we will see him face to face. Church, have a good day. May the Lord bless you and keep you and lift up your eyes unto Jesus today.